hey guys welcome back to the vin review it's your boy melvin and let's get into it so today we will be talking about one of the most successful telenovelas of all time and the telenovela itself is none other than Passion de Gavilanes, or should I say Hidden Passion. So Hidden Passion is a Colombian telenovela that was made in the year 2003, and it was a remake of a telenovela that was made in 1997. Um, Passion de Gavilanes became super successful that it has over seven versions that were made after it premiered in the year 2003. Um, this show was so impactful all over the world and it really um, cemented the actors and actresses as, you know, global telenovela superstars. You know, it catapulted them into superstardom all over the world, not just in Latin America. So let me give you the plot line. So the show um, follows Libya who falls in love with an older married man. And this older married man suddenly dies and Libya goes to his house to demand that the family takes care of her unborn baby. So when she is rejected by the family of the man, she decides to end her life. And after she ends her life, her brothers vow to seek vengeance and they infiltrate the Elizondo ranch as bricklayers. There they meet the three um daughters of the older man who died. And I think these events set off a series of complicated events whereby the three um brothers fall in love with the three sisters and there is drama because these um men are from a very humble background and these ladies are from a very wealthy background so you know social class is one thing that is highlighted on the show the differences between the brothers and the sisters is something that is highlighted in the show i think it's probably one of the main themes if you um live out revenge and i love revenge theme dramas and I always say that I hate it when they stray away from the revenge theme. But then I didn't in this case. You know, it made sense in this case. You know, it was, it ended up being one big misunderstanding, you know. And yeah. So what made this show successful? I think this show became successful because of the passion, okay? It didn't follow traditional telenovela rules, you know. They gave us so much, you know. There wasn't the the girls, you know, are so too goody, 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 and they wait until the wedding night. No, this wasn't the show for that. If people wanted each other in this show, they went for it, you know. You know, la they let last rain, which I felt was so good because, you know, it was made for a different generation and you know i'm happy for that and then the villains okay fernando wasn't you know a very powerful villain okay so fernando was the ex-husband of norma norma is one of the sisters um she is um sexually assaulted and so her mother decides to find her a husband and when um the mother decides to find a husband the mother finds someone she is in love with and decides to get her daughter married to that man um so that she can keep an eye on him you know so you just imagine the drama so when norma falls in love with one of the reyes brothers you know it, it becomes this huge thing there's so much drama and then the other villain that i like to talk about is none other than Donora rosales you know when we were watching the show we hated her so much but then that is to tell you that the actress playing her was actually very 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 talented you know she was so unlikable you know and she had this weird working style um that was so annoying and she was she was so bad that we really hated her so much so um Passion de Gavilanes really was a childhood defining telenovela for so many of us. And there are so many of those. But then this one, if you really think about, you know, people in my generation or maybe a bit older and when we were young. And I think that was really the golden age of telenovelas in our country, Kenya, whereby every, you know, television channel was broadcasting a telenovela after a telenovela. This really captivated audiences. This really was, you know, that girl during its its running period, you know, 
we really were happy to just watch, you know, Hidden Passion at 8 p.m. It really completed us. And even when they did the reruns, you know, you just went there, you know what is going to happen, but then you had, it was just so captivating. And that is really, 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 really amazing. You know, to have a telenovela break all these record and, and records and become a classic. Because Passion de Gavilanes is a classic by every means necessary. This show, as I've told you, there are probably seven versions of this show internationally. The Philippines made their own um, and it became super successful in Asia. Um, Spain have their own, but then that um, kind of flopped. You know, Mexico did their own through Telemundo. Um, it became successful in Mexico. So I'm not, I really don't, don't like remakes and adaptations. I really feel like telenovela producers are lazy, but then you know what? I might just watch another version of this. And in actually, there's a second season of this that is premiering this September on Telemundo Africa. Maybe I'll check it out and I will do a review on that. But then, um, to every one of us who watched this masterpiece, I know you have so much to say. It, it's very nostalgic to think about, you know, the intense um, love story of Norma and Juan. And, you know, the comical um, relationship of Jimena and Oscar and the intense, you know, relationship of Sarah and Franco. I mean, first of all, Sarah and Franco, I think, kind of became my favorite couple because their love story was so unexpected. We didn't expect them. They didn't even look at each other um, when the show began. They never noticed each other, right? Um, Sarah was the serious one. Franco was the young um, brother who, you know, was in love with... Who, what, what was her name? I, I've forgotten her name. Yeah, the, the girl who was a stripper. And then, you know, so the, their love story kind of came in towards the end of the show which I really, I, I really, really liked how they did it. You know, they didn't want to overpower us with, you know, so many love stories at once. They gave us um, Norma and, and Juan, and then they gave us, you know, him and I and Oscar, and then they gave us Sarah and Franco towards the end, which was impeccable, which was genius, I feel. So tell me your thoughts on this show. Did you watch it? Did you like it? Um, I read this at 10 out of 10 any day. Any year, anytime. This is a 10 out of 10, obviously. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.